Street. In just three days, the JCPS board will choose its transportation plan for next year. Parents and students are now being asked to weigh in on the four options the district is considering. Some parents told us it's not enough time to make a difference. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen has that story. I don't have any bus drivers. You know, what do you do? With the future of transportation for nearly 13,000 students up in the air, JCPS parents like Tanisha Booker worry. You know, if there's no students, there's no funding, then the programs are gone. Option one would cut all transportation for all magnet and traditional school students. It's the central idea in this new JCPS survey sent out to parents and students Thursday. There's not even, it doesn't really ask any, a whole lot of questions. Just six days before a decision will be made. This survey should have came out a long time ago. I mean, by now, the board already has their mind made up. So this survey should have came out months and months and months ago. JCPS says if things stay the same, the numbers just won't work for next year. That's why out of the four options, they're recommending option one to parents, though parents at Central High School take issue with that. It just, it's just not, it's not the best option. So these, these kids that are in these magnet schools, they made bonds, could make me lose a lot of my friends at school and I may not have any friends. And that's really very sad because I'm already a shy person. Tanisha's daughter, Kaylin, is a sophomore at Central. Just for us to not be able to go there anymore, I feel like it was a waste of our time. We done grown, we've grown bonds, we've grown like families at Central. JCPS families brace for impact ahead of a Tuesday board vote that could trigger change for thousands next school year. In Louisville, Connor Staff and WHAS 11 on your side. The Louisville NAACP and Louisville Urban League have voiced their opposition to option one. Both say if JCPS chooses it, they may withdraw their support of the district's choice zone plan. Well, new this morning, a woman is behind bars after allegedly beating her young stepdaughter to death. According to police, back in August, investigators responded to Norton Children's Hospital after staff reported a three-year-old girl had suffered a traumatic brain injury. Ashanti Jackson called 911 saying her stepdaughter fell off a bed during a seizure and then became unconscious from the fall. Jackson was the girl's caretaker at the time. The girl died at the hospital a couple of days later, but the autopsy has revealed her death is a homicide. Clarksville police arrested Jackson yesterday afternoon. She's facing several felony charges, including aggravated battery. Jackson is being held on a $1 million cash bond. Local leaders in Washington County, Indiana, are making new efforts to help law enforcement following the sheriff's threat to end overnight police patrols. In the hope of combating the hiring shortage, the leaders there are now offering raises. Sheriff Brent Miller pleaded his case with the County Council Friday and said officers have been working 16 hour days. For a majority of the meeting, the council said it could only raise wages if Miller agreed to cut two open positions that he's been unable to fill. I did not want to lose those positions on our department as well, especially when you're a small department. You can't hardly afford to give up positions. And, and uh, the fact that we were able to keep those positions and still get a raise from the top to the bottom uh, makes us a little more competitive at our department. The council agreed to give $8,000 raises across the board, and Indiana State Police officers are covering the overnight shift in the county until someone is hired or graduates from the academy. Former Clark County Sheriff Jamie Knoll is expected back in court April 9th on charges that he broke his recent bond agreement. When he posted bond, he was released from jail and Knoll was ordered to surrender his firearms, except for one shotgun. But Indiana State Police carried out a search warrant on his old Tay Bridge Road home and found at least two handguns. Noel and his attorney must now go before a judge and convince them why he shouldn't be held in contempt of court.